Promise Neverland season one finale. Uh, I've obviously been um, waiting for a long time to do this. Like uh, I could have like literally like done it yesterday, and even the day before that, and the day before that, and the day before that. But honestly, uh, you know, I just honestly wasn't in the fucking mood for it right now. And in general, I was just fucking busy. You know, trying to kick off my uh, artistic career, more or less, uh, so to speak. Uh, so yeah, pretty much, again, like always, my hands were full, so that's the reason why I couldn't make this review, uh, uh, sooner, but now, of course, you know, I'm in a state of mind, and I got the materials, and I'm just, overall, just in the mood now to fucking do it, so, yeah, you already know what it's about, um, in general, like I said, like, like I said before, about, um, Pretty much the promise Neverland, especially with this episode here and uh, here uh, around it. Then, um, yeah, like always, I said, always was really sketchy about you know the overall animation and art of a uh, overall animation and art of a uh, promise Neverland. The anime compared to its uh, uh, its uh, manga counterpart, considering. Uh, I mean, like I said before, the animators, the writers, the the imit the more or less the imitators who do the art, the concept art, and the, the art direction from manga to anime. Of course, like yeah, they can't get it like completely on the nose to the comic to anime, but it's still, but it still seems like Promise Neverland in general. It just still looks like a really low budget drawn animation, like. I mean, overall animation in general, it's, it's fine, but I feel like the anime could have looked better if you were to take how you would be able to adapt its comic counterpart. It would have actually overall just would have looked better in general, but and overall, you know, this still doesn't stop the show in itself from being, you know, good. I mean, I usually always don't, you know, use art style or, or animation to, you know, improving how good or something is, but... You know, as a critic, I gotta be as thorough as possible. So yeah, I had to hold that account. I had to hold that as a reason to, to critique it and whatnot. Um, uh, more or less, I heard, I saw the English trailer. Just so you want to know, I saw the English trailer for the Promise of Land coming coming out. Uh, my thoughts on overall English uh, voices they got for it. Um, from literally just a snippet I saw. Uh, I guess for the most part, it's. Uh, it's acceptable. It's not completely terrible. Uh, I th it seemed like they got a lot of big uh, faces doing the doing the voice work, so you might find some pretty adequate or, for the most part, just acceptable voice acting for the English dub. I promise, Neverland. Uh, personally, I want to bite of that action because I actually want to see how this turns out. Because it's all in Japanese, and honestly, the Japanese voice acting for Promise Neverland is like just top notch in general, like, I actually did, you know, feel like there was emotion, you know, put into it and whatnot, for, I think that's the most reason why people always prefer sub, uh, anime over dub anime, I think that may be one of the reasons why, but, more or less, yeah, I feel like the Japanese one, which is technically the only one of right now that we know of, uh, you know, they, it, they really did it, they really put their full foot into it, so, you know, I'm, I just really can't wait to, to figure out uh, how the English voices was going to be pulled off for the most part. So, I guess we're just going to have to cross that bridge when we get there with the overall uh, English voice acting. That's going to eventually come with Promise Neverland. Um, that aside, um, the overall finale of Promise Neverland in general, I was just like really fucking just like glued to my like I had my literally just had my eyes just fucking glued to the screen the whole time and for a while I kind of felt like the part when fucking Emma cut her ear off like you know it wasn't like you know Vincent Van Gogh or or uh, um, Mike Tyson like you know it was a the ear low because you know people over exaggerate like the he bit the whole damn ear off or he cut the whole damn ear off no it's like they like cut a lobe of that joan off or, or bit the lobe off in this, in this joan. But in this one, they actually fucking... She actually... Emma literally actually cut her whole fucking ear off. That shit... 
and shit made me groan, but I'm like, you know, you gotta hustle, bitch. You wanna get out of this shit? Yeah, you gotta do what you gotta do. I mean, the tracking device is literally just right here. They could just cut a piece off. So I kind of did feel like, yeah, the uh, overall the overall grotesque, it was, you were really pushing it there. But I guess that was just pretty much made to provocate, you know, the how dire the situation was with the whole ear. So I would have, like, taken points away from that from just it being over edgy or them trying to over grotesque it. But... It pretty much set it set a, it set a, a mood for the atmosphere of you know them trying to escape you know like do anything possible or go to hell and back just to save everyone to get the fuck out of here. So I'm not gonna uh, shake it too much. The whole cutting off the whole year thing, I guess it's just only made to show you know the how dire the situation is. It's made to you know uh, reinforce you know the tension and the uh, atmosphere of this series and. Uh, which I'm kind of glad about that, cause uh, anime snob, he kind of that anime snob, he kind of always point pointed out really the selling point of uh, Promise Neverland is his is is his tension, is its emotion. Uh, for the most part, yeah, he's right. I mean, in general, I, some points he says about Promise Neverland that he's totally right about, uh, but I don't mean I I like his opinion. I mean, I like you know his evaluation and his uh. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And his analyst he had for the promise nothing like despite I don't agree with his opinion, but I feel like he did raise a good point. I feel I do feel like the main selling point of Promise Neverland is his mood, its tone, its tension, its 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 thrill, so to speak. So yeah, I, I guess you know it would have fit that she cut her whole fucking ear off to represent how fucking dire it was and whatnot. And of course, you know, they did the fucking unspeakable. They literally burnt down the whole fucking orphanage. And mm, it was just, it was a lot going on, but every moment I was just fucking invested to it. Um, I feel like this is pretty, in some, in some cases, I feel like uh, Promise Neverland is just like uh, more or less cute porn, so to speak. Like, uh, just how the Japanese voice overs do for the characters, you know, they try to over it a lot, so, you know, all those... All the female watchers can, you know, fucking be glued to the screens to it. So I guess that's why they did it. Or, you know, to show how, you know, what they're doing to these innocent children. You know, it's like I said. I feel like, yeah, like what Anime Snob said. I feel like most of the selling point of Promise Neverland is, is emotional atmosphere. It's emotional tension. And I think that's the reason why they pretty much cuting it up for the audience and whatnot for the girls to pretty much fucking gawk at it and whatnot and you know fucking be bedazzled by how cute it was and you know it's also made to show you know how these fucking kids are being slaughtered and eaten by these creatures so so yeah i think i feel like it's a lot of emotional tension and drive in promise neverland and that's pretty much one of his main selling points in general but then again yeah, sure, the main selling point and pretty much the nothing else is the emotional investment. But then again, you got to realize The Promised Neverland is uh, a psychological horror. I think that's kind of the whole point of, you know, any uh, work of fiction relating to horror. It is it's supposed to evoke you, make you fear, uh, uh, feel grotesque, made you f uh, uh, make you feel uh, kind of scared or surprised or something. So, yeah, in terms of uh, setting the tone, setting the mood. I feel like overall Promise Neverland actually really did fit the bill for here. Um, overall, I actually did enjoy the... If I didn't already say this yet. Uh, overall, I actually did enjoy this. Uh, the small as the big... The overall finale of this uh, anime. Uh, and I already know, yeah, I already pretty much looked it up on Wikia about... Norman not really being dead, but they kind of made it seem so. so but I kind of, I, I kind of had an idea that that's what was fucking going on. To be honest, um, it seemed like uh, Emma Ray, uh, Emma and Ray finally gave out the gas about you know what the fuck been going on to all the other kids, them pretty much being fucking products for the demons. So I guess they all were willing to pass over that wall, which I'll get to later in this review. Um, 
in general, which actually does bring a lot of problems, actually, with towards the, uh, the only little problems I have with the overall finale of uh, the Promise Neverland that I'll bring up later in the video, like I said. Um, uh, pretty much, uh, the Promise Neverland in itself, it's just like, like I pretty much already said this in past reviews relating to Promise Neverland. Uh, you know, it's pretty much, Promise Neverland is pretty much, and pretty much every episode just keeps you just, you know, wanting more, you know? And I feel like uh, this anime does a real good job on, on keeping interest for the most part. Uh, for the most part, I don't see them really pushing the envelope much in Promise Neverland as I thought they would with, like, with uh, Attack on Titans with their kind of somewhat pretentious overtones, but which I, I, I do, God, hope that that's not the road uh, Promise Neverland goes. That they pretty much become an attack on Titan. It just pretty much becomes a fucking soap opera with monstrous shit walking around. I hope that's not the, uh, the direction Promise Neverland will be going. Um, uh, I guess, and I guess, um, I also heard about in the comic. There's this, you know, big revolution and whatnot. You know, fighting against the uh, the uh, demons and whatnot. So I guess we may see some more character growth and, and development and character interaction and possibly even some world building and whatnot and faction building and group building and all and whatnot. Uh, we pretty much probably might even see a, a time skip with uh, Norman, with, uh, mm. with Ray and Emma and all the other kids may see a time skip, which, you know, not might, not might be bad, might be good to see, you know, them actually grow, physically grow throughout the series and whatnot. Uh, um, uh, yes, okay, I guess this is before I get to the problem, to the problems of it. Uh, for the most part, yeah, setting the tone, the characters, the tension, the mood, they pretty much nailed it in Promise Neverland, for the most part. So, yeah, was, yeah so, yeah, you know, that's pretty much the, the pros I got with this, and I, you know, I gotta bring up the cons of what I thought about it. Um, for the most part, uh... I kind of feel like, yeah, it was like kind of a bit, like some parts were, were kind of rushed in this series. Like, things just happen on a fucking whim sometimes. Like, like, uh, uh, like, or I'm not, I mean, I'm not even giving suggestions because, you know, this is their work. This is how they want to write it. But I did feel like there was a lot of things kind of rushed in this series and whatnot. Um, uh, I kind of felt the whole reveal with uh, Norman and, uh, and mom, uh, uh, um, mom's son being uh, Ray, my bad, not Norman, Ray. Like, that's actually her maternal, like she, you know, shot him out of her pussy son. Uh, I kind of felt like it was just, at that point, I kind of did feel like it was just uh, just mindless uh, and pointless um, character. Uh, 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 that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> it's like a really fucking popular one. Uh, a shock value, or so to speak. Um, uh, twist, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm looking for. God damn. <laughs> Should be knowing this shit, I'm a fucking critic. Anyway, yeah, I feel like the whole twist with uh, Ray actually secretly being uh, 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 Isabella's uh, true son, I kind of feel like it kind of came out of nowhere a bit, but. Now I'm looking back at it, it was kind of foreshadowed a bit, because although how seemingly unforgiving uh, Isabella was up until, of course, the last episode, uh, how unforgiving she was, she always did seem to have, you know, a thing about Ray, like, like she knows, like, yeah, I'm going to have to sell you off eventually, because you know too much, and you're inspiring all the other kids to escape and whatnot, like, like, you know, like, that's the only way I'm gonna, you know, keep shit in tip top shape. I have to crack a few eggs to make an omelet. Although you're my son, it's still a business. We still gotta, you know, run shit around here. I guess. Uh, I it was kind of pretty much hinted because, although yeah, she had to sell him off. She still seemed to have a really, uh, a really more softer approach of doing it. Hell, actually, in general, uh, despite. You know, like I said, it's a big business and she has to ship them all off. Uh, the main character is, of course, Norman. 
Norman M. Unray, and even I guess you can even count Phil. I guess the uh, the Hispanic boy. Uh, I guess you can count him too a bit, or even for most of the kids in general. Uh, she may see at one point she may seem regrettable about selling them off, like un uh, re unregrettable about selling them off. Uh, but in those particular characters in general, she still feel like you know, like she didn't want to, like she still, you know has some type of sympathy somewhere in her that she don't pretty much want to see her surrogate uh, children get sold off and of course a real kid Bray get sold off yeah but I just feel like the twist in general was just it kind of came out of nowhere in general I mean it was foreshadowed a lot but it still it wasn't really it wasn't well supplied for the most part you could say uh, it's kind of it kind of seems like half of the twist from Bleach when Eisen pretty much revealed that Ichigo was his creation. Like, yeah, some parts yeah did seem kind of believable and did you know lead a lot of suspicions, and then some parts just seemed kind of just improbable. And that's pretty much how I kind of felt with uh, most of the with that particular reveal in general. Um, Another another problem I got with it over one another con I got with uh, the Promised Neverland's finale in general was when uh, literally they all just literally pull the fucking just uh, uh, red herring out their asses with uh, with them trying to cross over the uh, the wall, but there was like a there's like a abyss down below so they can't just jump over it. And they literally just came up with the random idea, the ass pool, so to speak, to literally just make their own makeshift zip lines to throw them over the abyss to wrap around the trees so they can swing down them uh, to land. And uh, they did this really, like, this really bad hand wave about the makeshift zip lines in this episode where they showed Norman doing it. Or or him or no no it was Ray uh, doing something like that so they can escape and it was just really hand wave in, in general I kind of feel like yeah at some point is the ending in general was really forced and rushed like they they could have made like you know an uh, episode dedicated to that part or you know show more light on you know them making the the makeshift uh, zip lines they could you know they could have put more emphasis so to speak they could shine more light to the concept of the makeshift uh, zip lines instead of just randomly pulling them out from nowhere. Like, you know, when 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 the time when Norman, when the time Norman uh, got up on, got up top on that wall and he looked down, he knew like, yeah, we're not going to fucking get out of here. They're watching us like a fucking hawk, man. <laughs> These guys are Nazis. You guys are Nazis. <laughs> That's what it pretty much was. <laughs> the whole gauntlet of doom and whatnot. <laughs> but yeah, uh, for the most part, I just feel like it was kind of pretty ass pulled, and I would have actually the whole ass pulled makeshift zip line scene in the last episode. I would have probably forgiven it more if they just said, like I said before, if they put more inferences on them making the zip lines, if they or at least made an episode on it or. Or it did would seem pretty kind of fillerish, but if it still relates to the overall plot, I think it is p important that you uh, kind of you know put uh, shed some light on it. If you make it prominent, if you make it you know believable and not as poolish. So yeah, for the most part, if these shed more caught more at light and inferences on the whole zip line concept instead of just literally just pulling out their ass and doing a really shitty hand wave for what's going on. Then. I would have let it pass, but looking at it from a critical standpoint, I just simply see it as just a really badass bull, and I cannot excuse it. Uh, but, and I kind of did like how Isabella pretty much was literally just on a ass. She was ready to get them all back. But, you know, she actually saw Emma and all of them pass by, and she was like, you know what, fuck it, this is it. I, I lost. Like, she has this, uh, 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 Mother Isabella, she has this, um, she, Mother Isabella has this really weird, uh, stereotypical, you know, competitive, evil, uh, 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 protagonist, uh, mm, antagonist concept with her, 
going on where she, you know she can accept being defeated and whatnot. I mean, at first I I would cringe at that concept because it's been that's that's like some comic book shit right there. Or well, it, it is based on the comic book, but yeah, I get what I'm going for. Like you know, it was like really cheesy. It could have been like really fucking cheesy. Uh, but for the most part, now they actually, uh, actually, I kind of respected Isab Isabella more or less thrown in the towel. She's been outsmarted, she's been outwitted, and she more or less took her L. And I guess you know we get we finally get more about her own personal flashback. She was once a kid who was going to be Harvest. She tried to escape. Uh, more or less, the organization behind all the shipping of the children caught note and probably saw of her capabilities and pretty much uh, signed her up to be a mom because, you know, she's a mamma jamma. So, yeah. And I think when she saw that, it pretty much reminded her of her former self. And in that point, we see something about Isakilla, Isabella, Isabella, Isabella's character <laughs> that we we didn't, we, we usually didn't see about her, which actually, would, actually kind of did flabbergast me a lot. Um, pretty much, uh, yeah, she's said to be defeated, and, um, <laughs> we finally get more, we, they finally shine more light on her backstory, and you kind of realize, you know, she's not as bad as you think she was, she's, she is kind of regret, she seemingly does seem kind of regrettable, regrettable half of the things she does, uh, I, uh, she seemed regrettable half the things she does, she, or when she saw those kids, uh, her kids escape. She pretty much saw a piece of her in them, and she couldn't. I guess she couldn't drive herself to uh, apprehend them, and or she took her ale and more or less let them escape. It's it's a lot of uh, jumbled ideas on that concept, on, on that concept, so to speak. Uh, she let her hair out, and uh, you know, I guess that represents you know she's free or she's relieved of it. So I guess that fit the, the scene perfectly for the most part. Uh, she's also hot, by the way, when she did that for some reason. I don't know why. She was just she was looking like a snack. But yeah, no, seriously. Uh, Isabella and herself, she's actually a really, like, really well-written character in general. She's like the fucking Zuko of uh, Promise Neverland, because Zuko's no, it's undoubtedly pretty much one of the best-written characters of, his, of Avatar. And that's how I pretty much feel about Isabella for the most part. She's pretty much the best character on the show in general. Uh, uh, but really, I'm just I'm just really waiting to see what's, what they're going to go on, what they're going to do on uh, what they're going to do next. Like, and especially how it was written from from start start middle and end, it really did open the door for a whole lot of fucking possibilities for the Promise Neverland. You got world building, you got character introduction. You got more uh, discussions on the topic at hand. Like, it just, just like them gliding across the, uh, the abyss, they opened the door for Promise Neverland for so many possibilities in the uh, upcoming season that's coming out next year, if I'm pretty sure. Um, so, yeah, uh, more or less, it really did end it on more or less wanting more from it and whatnot. Uh, it was pretty good. I'm going to have to give it up. I'm going to have to give it, um, yeah, uh, an exceptional with a few minor setbacks here and there, full, like, minus all the ass pulls and the really lame brain, uh, twist that in general could have had, could have shit, could have had some more light shit on them, or they could have just been, they could have been executed better just if, you know, if, you know, the writer actually gave half a shit of actually, you know, impacting it more. In terms of the anime, I can't speak for the manga. Because a book, because uh, a movie or anything in, in you know, physical uh, media can't really fully capture everything from a book. And I understand that. But, yeah, I feel like, you know, that, that the overall uh, ass pools could have been pulled off better and whatnot. So, yeah, that's pretty much all I got to feel about it. I feel, I feel about that concept. It was uh, exceptional with a few drawbacks. For the most part, it was pretty accepted. Uh, it was pretty acceptable and I'm pretty much hungry for more so to speak and that pretty much shows how uh, how good the writer more or less pushes the overall uh, the tension and uh, overall uh, 
and care and concern that, you know, the viewers such as myself would have for it. So, yeah, good job, man. Uh, I guess I can tell you, I, I've, I've been out for a while with all the shit I've seen. I guess I can tell you how I feel about it. Um, uh, the six second song that, that Reese one he made was fucking awesome. He's on some emo rap shit though, but yeah, it was fucking awesome. I enjoyed it. It was pretty good. And I feel like, uh, six seconds is on the verge, you know, you know, finally changing shit up. Cause you know. You no know, real rappers will real fucking will, will keep on surviving. They keep on having the same shit. They have the same lyrics, same flow, same this, same that, yada yada yada. You know, you gotta you kind of have to blend in, or you know, you gotta you know you got you gotta upgrade if you want to survive in the rap game. That's just pretty much how it fucking is. So yeah, some on some emo rap shit. Not really my cup of tea, but I, I but it is exceptional enough, and I can see where it's going. He's you gotta be, got kind of gotta be realistic when it comes to shit like that. So yeah, it was pretty good. Um, the Joker trailer, I'm literally just in the middle with it. Like, it actually looks like kind of good, but she looks like really fucking dumb in some cases, or at least I just wasn't kind of fully taking it seriously. Again, we'll just cross that bridge when we get there. Uh, the Joker trailer, I'm in the middle of on, on that. Um, uh, damn, anything else? Uh, oh, yeah, and uh, more or less, I uh, kind of think Promise Neverland is an allegory for slavery. So, yeah, you can take that, I guess. I mean, I just had that thought just joggling in my mind for a long time, and I guess I could just say that out. It's a, a really, I, Promise Neverland looks like a really soft allegory for slavery uh, and whatnot. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all about it. Y'all know the drill. You know, uh, hit me up on Twitter, hit me up on my Instagram, hit me up on uh, DeviantArt, I'm finally selling out my work. So if y'all have seen anything y'all like, just, you know, drop them coins in, you know, support your boy, you know what I'm saying? Uh, give some donations on there if you like and whatnot. Uh, oh yeah, Soccer Wars, that's one thing. Uh, soccer Wars, um, let's see. I heard about the game like a couple of years back, but that's like way before my fucking time. Uh, I saw the OVA, it was all right, I guess. I mean, it pretty much has fucking fan service written all over it. Um, but I was really surprised when I, fir when I figured out um, Taikubo uh, did the uh, overall concept art for this game. He's doing the overall artwork and art directorship for this game, so that's pretty fucking cool. And I pretty much seen the character models for Soccer Wars, and it actually shows a lot. But you know, he's trying to you know get out there. You know, he's trying to expand his reach from other shit than just manga and, and clothes. And that even at one point wanted to design buildings. I guess you know he's trying to do he's trying to do it all. I guess, and you know, I really can't fucking blame blame him. You gotta do your thing, bro. I, I fucking respect you on that. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I gotta say about what I think about shit now. Um, uh, you know, man, you know how it is, uh, support, support Bleach, man, I literally just fucking bought this at the bookstore, so yeah, support Bleach, uh, and if you like Bleach content and shit, you can hit up, uh, Bleach Center, or Platinum Equinox, or even J Cloud Anime Talk, you know, just hit them up, they, if you like anything Bleach related, just hit them up, cause they always got some from, oh, and James Hansen, whatnot, uh, that's pretty much all I gotta say about it, uh, might make an Another video later when I get to it. Talk about whatever I fucking got through or whatever is in my fucking mind. You already know what it is, man. Uh, like, subscribe. Post it on the comments what you thought about that little rant and review and whatnot about Promise Neverland and whatnot. Yeah, you already know what it is. And uh, like always, man, that storm is watching y'all.